sleepers are scary. And we're going to kill a bunch. In our Proteus, let's dive into the fit right now, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in, everybody. Name's Loru, digital advertiser, content creator, and Eve enjoyer for the better part of 10 years now. And this is the fit we've been using to kill our sleepers, or indeed ratting in wormhole space. We're doing it in a Proteus. We're going to tell you the fit really, really quick, and then I've got some footage that I actually pre-recorded. -pre we're going to be talking over about how we did some stuff. Let's dive into it. So, high slots. So, let's talk about the fit. Here's your five... 200 millimeter railguns, less range, but you can fit five of them safely with our CPU and power requirements. One Covert Ops cloak makes sense. Expand a probe launcher. We are going to use combat probes with this. I find that using combat probes is actually better because it scares away the people that don't want a PvP and it makes people more on edge and lets me kind of do what I want. Well, I'm not exactly ganking people. We did get to gank somebody, but we didn't go out to actually gank somebody. Okay, that's the highs. Mids, afterburner tech two. Just put on an afterburner. You want to be able to taxi to the site. I couldn't fit a micro warp drive on this, although if you can get one to fit, that is kind of preferred to be honest because you do, you're a bit slow, about 500 max ish with this afterburner. It is what it is. We've got a Thucker large. Is that how you pronounce that? Thucker? I don't know. It's a large cap battery. This one specifically because it has less CPU and power grid requirements. And you need to have a cap battery against these sleepers because if they're neuting, they're going to neutralize some of your cap. You have to have some defense. A cap battery does that. It is necessary. We were able to fit a large cap battery on a medium ship. Huge, massive, 10 out of 10. Fantastic. A single drone nav computer tech one. I can use tech twos. Tech one because of the CPU and power requirements. You're also going to, we're going to talk about what we're going to uh, use this slot for later with our mobile depot. Now for the lows, two medium armor reps. Yes, this is one of the best things about these uh, uh, Proteus, excuse me, when you fight sleepers, you can use your armor reps. You can use a nanite focused armor rep too. I just don't want to deal with that right now. It's fine. These worked enough for C2s and uh, one smaller C C3 site. Anything bigger than what I was doing, just be be scared of sleepers. That's all I'm going to say to you. Okay. A Federation Navy multi, multi spectrum. This is the across the board, get your armor tank up. Uh, you have to use a Federation Navy one or one of the faction ones because again, of the power requirements and CPU, etc. Two drone damage amps. This is a gun drone boat. You got to have it. Uh, drones are my higher DPS. So that's what I'm going for. Uh, and finally, one reactive armor harder. These are very clutch, extremely excellent. I can't recommend it enough over a damage control. I had a better time tanking with this or sleeper specifically, 10 out of 10. Finally, for the rigs, medium trimark increases your amount of armor, gives you some more buffer. It's scary when some of these battleships start hitting me for a bunch, and I just want to have a bit more buffer. You can like whatever other rigs you like. I like this one. And two auxiliary nano pump twos increase the amount of armor repairs you get. The subsystems are covert, drone synthesis, hyperspatial, augmented fusion. This is a pretty standard ratting setup for the Proteus. You could use the gank headpiece. I don't love it. I'd much rather you use the uh, fusion reactor. I believe that's the difference there. 7,000. Well, who? Thank you, <laughs> I guess. Ammo. We're going to do three types of ammo because you kind of run out of cargo space a lot with this. Javelin is for super close. Antimatter is for close to mid and spike is for maximum range. The sleepers tend to rush you, the, the frigates. So you want more javelin and more antimatter than you want the spike. I tend to only use the spikes on the battleships that stay to more at range. Sisters combat scanner probe, bring the better probes. You're going to have to find some stuff in here. So bring the, bring, bring the better probes. Let's talk about the drones. You're going to use 10 wasps because five wasps are your standard team. You're not going to bring any light drones, none, zero, zilch, because the sleepers are going to target these. They're going to shoot them down. They're going to take them out. Uh, you need to use heavy drones because they do more damage to them. And they're going to be more tankier, harder to kill for the sleepers. So bring 10 because if you have to leave a site, if somebody warps onto you against wormhole space, you're not safe. If you have to leave a site, you can leave your full group behind and not worry about it. You can carry on with another five wasps. All right. Five salvage drones dunk specifically because they have a difficulty bonus high enough to salvage a sleeper rex okay so only the dunk ones even the the tech ones are not going to cut it unless your skills are really high and even then i'm not sure i have tech four salvaging and uh enough for the dunk salvage drone so the fun ones we're gonna have one medium hull and one medium armor bot on there i didn't really have anything else to put in there these let you heal up your drones <gasps> ah, i know exactly ever have damaged drones you're like well it's at 99 percent hull i can't use this anymore it will happen against the uh, uh sleepers after the site's done when you're kind of just sitting there salvaging take a couple salvage drones away throw out 
your drone, throw out the damaged wasp, your uh, hull repair, your armor repair, and let it go. It's slow, but it's better than having nine drones than eight drones and whittling away. You're going to be using these. I've used, you're going to see me using these in some of the footage that we're going to have coming up. Finally, just one Hornet EC, it's anti-gank measure. It just is one of those extra throwaways. I had a, I had a five slot, through, uh, threw that in there. Let's talk about what you're going to bring in your cargo. You're going to bring a mobile depot, an MTU, a data analyzer two, and a relic and a and a relic analyzer to say that five times fast sheesh so we all know how it is in wormhole space sometimes you warp in there's like one combat site and there's a bunch of cosmic signatures sometimes it's the other way around you want to be able to fit for what you find and the relic analyzer is the better one you're going to find better loot in my opinion from the relics the primary source of money is going to come from the sleepers and the salvage on the sleepers but hey you might get a really awesome pattern that's what these are for and of course the mtu is for collecting the various sleeper rex okay so that's the fit i successfully was using this in c1 c2s and a single c3 site the c3 scared the hell out of me okay so be very careful this was a tough fight i was overloading stuff uh let's dive in and check out stuff so quick note that i forgot when i was doing the fit uh the drone nav computer is the thing you're going to be swapping in and out for the relic and data analyzer you need the afterburner to taxi in, in, in between sites and you need to have the cap bed around there just in case somebody hops onto you and go from there so you'll see that we are absolutely maxed C cpu and power grid are there so make sure if you can find a better fit to this let me know in the comments i want to read it okay let's dive into how we're going to use this right now all right so here we are we are ready to go i found a wormhole this is some previous footage i took when i was on one of my day trips you do see that i have an alt there that's following me around definitely subscribe to that video we're going to be putting out some awesome content about how you can multi-box and dual box and this kind of stuff let's check out this wormhole it's very important to understand the order of operations when you go into a wormhole to maximize your safety you are not safe inside of these wormholes the first thing you're going to do is you're going to check on the debuff slash buffs in the area we were lucky and we got a plus armor buff and a minus shieldy buff this is an armor boat excellent stuff for us yeah yeah you're gonna save the wormhole in space i can't tell you enough you gotta do this i've done it too many times you know if i had a nickel right you know so that's that's the first thing the next thing you're going to do is you're going to pop onto d scan you're going to see if anybody's around you're going to check on maximum distance we already see there's some core scanner probe somebody's here it is a sun assist now this is a destroyer this is going to be pretty easy for us to take out in our proteus i'm not super worried about it we're going to continue forward but this does mean he could have a buddy just understand that so next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to get a spot in space you're going to not just be sitting uh, cloaked next to a sun or a planet or an asteroid belt. You're going to go get a spot in space. You got your spot ready to go. You're pressing control B to open this up. And then you press submit when you're mid warp. It's going to get a spot in space. Again, you're making a spot in the dead of space mid warp. That's how you do it. I warp to a sun. I warp to a planet. I get the spot ready to go. And then as I'm warping, I click it. I, I finish the warp. I turn it around and warp back to that spot and you're going to say here i am warping back to that spot so that's how you find that in space while i'm doing that i'm launching my probes i cloak up and let's begin let's start scanning we're going to go see what and who we can find i'm going to cut this up a little bit we're going to pick this back up when we get the rest of these cosmic signatures scanned and when we find what's up next so we'll be right back all right so we're about to warp to another sleeper site this was some footage we had just cleared a sleeper site and now i was looting it so now we're going to let the mtu do its work gather all of the stuff together. And then we're going to talk about when to drop the MTU in just a moment. We're going to warp to this next sleeper site. You notice I have combat safe ready to go. What we're doing is we're trying to get a save point again, not in the dead of space, but in the actual combat zone that is warpable in the combat zone it has to be more than 150 km away. You're going to see from like where the actual sleepers are. So I don't want them targeting me yet. I kind of panicked there and I put the cloak on. They will start going for it. So I have a combat safe. It is in the area. It's a little pin in space. It's kind hard to see we're going to get two combat safes this is important for a couple reasons if somebody comes at you and is trying to gank you then you could just warp to the combat safe it doesn't use a lot of cap the farther away the warp is the more cap it is you don't have to fumble for like oh i'm going to the moon or i'm going to go to this it's right there it's in space for you it's easy to click on and you're going to have your spots up in on your on your ui ready to go you're going to have two combat safes so that if the also for the sleepers if they're coming at you if you're at combat safe one you can align to combat safe two and warp there and you can just keep going back and forth are you in trouble go to the next combat safe get your cap back get your armor back up you don't need to overload as much this is going to help you take the time to do this take the time to have some safe spots and here you're going to see i'm getting my second combat safe right about now 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 click 
one of these is going to get clicked. Okay, great. So we have our two combat safes ready to go. You can also mark the data sites. If there's a data site, you can also mark a spot on the map if you would like and just go from there. So uh, now I'm going to warp back to my MTU and finish salvaging, and I'm going to cut back in when we're ready to go for this sleeper site. Okay, we're warping back. We finished clearing that first one. We made about, I think it's about 20 million because the rest of our ammo and the MTU and the mobile depot is another couple million in there too. So that first site was about 20 million. Excellent. All the salvage, all the metal scraps, all of the sleeper, all the blue loot. We're ready to go. We warped to our combat safe. We have our shield ticking. Now we're going to talk about how we do this. The first thing is look at the modules. Notice how the armor tanks are actually staggered. They're not both going at the same time. You do one to about half and then you start the next one. This is going to let your tank be more even. It's going to make it so that you don't have to worry as much for spike damage coming in, especially for those battleships. I lost a Proteus, another ship, filming this kind of segment before I didn't stagger it. That's what happened, okay? We warp to a combat safe, and now it's going to take some time for the sleepers to get here. The frigates go really fast. So what you can do, I warped to combat safe one. I've aligned to combat safe two. Let the frigates push you. They're going to get you uh, to, to you way before the cruisers are going to get to you. And you can take their frigates out before the cruisers can even target and can even give you some damage. So now we're just waiting for the frigates to come in range. The afterburner's on. Uh, my, my tank is on. This is a cap-stable build, so we can just keep everything on and not have to worry about it. That's one of the benefits. So this is what they look like. Fantastic. They're really creepy. This is why the large cap battery is such a big deal. We're going to start targeting these, and I'm going to take some pot shots at them with some spike ammo, but I'm going to quickly realize these are moving way too fast, and they're basically not even worth it. I don't even know if I click them on this, so fair enough. Once the frigates get close enough to us, we're going to load up our javelin ammo, our antimatter ammo, and throw our wasps out. I typically like to wait until the sleepers are very close to me within 17 to 20, especially the frigates, to throw out my drones. You'll see some of our drones were damaged uh, in the last run. I will repair those after this. And once they come out, you see I insta-pop one of the frigates. Actually, that's a lot of damage off the board. The frigates are nuding me. We're safe enough with the large cap battery. You can see the cruisers have just started to hit us. So we're just going to send the drones out. The frigates are gone. Frigates, are the, I believe, are the ones that are going to web you. Look up what the room is. That's something else while I kill off these. You need to look up every single room that you come into these sleepers and this is probably the most important thing when it comes to how to do these rooms each room is going to have a certain mob that's going to trigger the next wave of enemies you have to know who that is so you don't kill them first because you don't want a battleship warping in with a bunch of other helpers when you're still working on wave number one or two okay so make sure you know that make sure you check that out so you see i'm mousing over the guns here i'm setting up the distances of the various ammo it's one of the most annoying things about hybrid ammo is you have to keep balancing which ammo is best for what okay so right now i should be using some javelin ammo and i'm picking up stuff i'm, I'm checking some discord we're going to leave that in now that that one's done i'm probably going to switch this to javelin maybe maybe not either way the heavy drones are the bulk of your damage when you're doing this make sure you understand the drones are the bulk of your damage they're the things that you have to protect so don't worry necessarily about the right ammo, the wrong ammo, just throw on antimatter if they're mid to low distance and start hitting them. If they're super close to you, like those frigates, the javelins are going to work. And if they're far away, use the spike ammo. Something I need to do more. I need to be on D-scan more. Make sure that you're on D-scan. I'm probably going to put D-scan to a separate window so I don't have to keep going from drones to uh, uh, D-scan, especially in this drone boat. So I'm, I need to be constantly just in D-scan every couple seconds, just checking to make sure nobody's trying to scan me down, make sure there isn't some kind of ship coming in and go from there. So that's this first wave. As you can see, we were able to clear it pretty easily. Uh, they didn't even come down uh, even a little bit of my armor tank. Uh, this does this whole area does have an armor buff, so yay, yay me. Fantastic. That's how you do sleeper ratting. So let's talk about when you drop your MTU. So I know that this room is going to have four waves. I typically drop the MTU at the start of wave three. Why that is, is because if somebody comes in and quickly cloaks, if someone comes into the wormhole and quickly cloaks, I'm not going to be able to see them necessarily on D-scan. They're going to see that there's a Proteus. And if they just see the Proteus, I could be anything. Proteuses are, are very slippery. Proteuses could be uh, here for relic sites. Proteuses could be here for just scanning or ganking, especially ganking, right? And remember, you know that I leave my combat probes out in the field so people see the combat probes. So they, they know that I can see them. If they see the MTU, they know we're ratting or they know that we're probably doing some ratting, at least initially. So now they're going to come check around the combat site. So by minimizing the time the MTU is on the board, I minimize the time, the information that you're giving the enemy is kind of what I'm saying, right? In this room, you're seeing I'm going to be prioritizing 
the uh, battleship. I'm waiting until it gets within range of the 61 kilometer. Uh, it's a little bit too far away for my targeting is a little bit farther away than my actual shots. That's one of the problems of having 200 millimeter railguns instead of 250. Your range is much, much less. So I'm just chilling here, but the battleship's hitting me. We're taking some spike damage and then we're healing it back up. Everything's fine. Uh, that's when to use the MTU. So that's that. Now you can go do wormhole ratting with sleepers in your excellently fitted Proteus. One of my favorite ships for sure. Love the look. It looks like a freaking motorcycle. Fantastic. Love the Tech 3 ships. You can slot and deal with whatever you would like to. Not getting a whole new ship, but instead of getting pieces of the ship. Feels more engineering like. Love that. If you want more e-videos, some stuff is about to pop up on your screen right now. Check those out. Like, subscribe. You know what to do. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.